Hello everyone, this is Hank. I'm back. Um, today in this episode, we are going to talk about the color panel editing. Okay, I'm using the same photo as the previous video uh, for continuity. So we um, in the light panel edit um, video, uh, these are the changes that we made to the original picture. Okay, so um, now I'm going to open the light. Now, of course, if, if you're interested in finding out how to reset everything, uh, what to manipulate in the edit panel, uh, look up the video for the edit panel where we talk about all of that. So, so I'm going to use some of it, but I'm not going to repeat everything again and again. That would take too much time. So please take a look at those if you're interested in getting the details. All right. So the the color it has um, basically to me it has like two parts to it. The the first part is the ability for you to change the white balance. Okay, and then the other ones are the ability to change the color vibrancy and saturation of the photo. So there's like two things. Okay, so on the white balance, I already have a separate video talking about the white balance between uh, JPEG versus RAW. You might want to look into that if you're interested. But here we're just doing the basic white balance for an ordinary photo, right? So default is always a shot. A shot meaning that uh, depending on what you set for your uh, in your camera, it'll show up here, right? I normally just shoot in auto white balance and actually I, I choose a auto white balance with white preferences so things are not too um, too warm for me so so the S shot value uh, shows you the temperature and the tint setting for the auto white balance result for the picture that I use okay so now now with with um, the wonderful ACR, you don't have to be locked into it, even though that is the previous decision, right? Especially if you, you shoot in RAW, uh, then you don't worry so much about changing. So all you have to do is, if you click down here, you see that, okay, you can choose an auto, which I kind of did um, for mine. Uh, you can choose daylight. And choose cloudy shade and and these will slightly change the coloring of your photo let, let me kind of demonstrate okay the auto as you can see a lot warmer well remember my autos auto white balance white right so normally Canon uh, they they do things a little bit warmer they, they like that now, if you like that, the auto will give you a lot warmer imaging, okay? Um, and then the daylight, okay? Different temperature, that's all. Slightly different tint, too. So, and then you can switch it to cloudy. Okay, cloudy normally gives you a very warm result for a, a normal... Okay, the shade is the opposite. Uh, actually, not opposite, but it even gives you more warm. Okay, because normally in the shade, if, if, if you just use standard white balance, uh, it tend to be a little blue. So to counter for it, they make it warmer. Okay, so tungsten. Okay, in the stung tungsten taken... Um, uh, during daylight, you have the opposite effect like this. Okay, fluorescent, all of these are like, will give you that. And then the flash would give you like 5500, that standard flash, right? So you can like change it to whatever. I'm going back to S sharp. Okay, to me, the auto white balance W give me really good uh, white balance to start out with. Normally, don't worry too much more than that. And especially when I shoot, I shoot raw, so I can change the 
white balance to anything I like. So um, you don't really have to to shoot a manual white balance. It's not necessary if you do post processing. That's a point. Okay. Now at this point, you could just do, you know, your own. You know, you can turn it to the right to get warmer result, turn it to the left to get cooler result until you satis satisfy. Okay. Now, if you messed up, no fear, right? You just go back here, do a shot, and then you reset everything back to the beginning. So it'll give you the freedom to uh, explore without fear of ruining your photo. Okay, now you notice this uh, dropper is called the white balance tool. This tool is very useful. Okay, uh, because it gives you ability to just press on something as a reference to to correct it. Normally, you probably heard about 18% gray. You know, when you you can buy like a gray card and you take a picture with a gray card with Dean. And if you you have an area that you know for sure is 18% gray, you press on that and then your white balance is going to be as your eyes had seen the scene. So so in theory at least. Okay, so so that that is how you know when you take a photo of like say a, a car and you want like perfect color reproduction and then you you probably be thinking about using a gray card now in Photoshop there are ways to find what 18% gray is but you have to use the regular Photoshop to do it you know ACR doesn't really give you that ability yet but you can get pretty close so you can find some area that is kind of grayish okay and if you can't find any area like that, you could use a white surface. The idea of th this uh, dropper is that it's going to get rid of the color cast for you. For example, a, a white image uh, may not look white in a photo because of some color casting. And so to get rid of it, you press this. So in our scenario, it's kind of hard to guess where the gray area is. If you, I had to guess, okay, some of the water here looks is gray enough. The wall here is pretty gray, okay. Uh, and if you you don't hear the gray, as a last resort, you can always press on the white. But but I prefer to press on the gray. Okay, this might be gray, this might be gray, so depends. You don't really have to be super accurate, right? Um, so I'm pretty sure some of the clouds has enough gray in there. Okay, so um, for example, let's say let's try pressing it here. Okay, it, it make a very slight adjustment, so that's probably pretty accurate gray there. Okay, this one is too warm, so this is not the right gray. Now if I press on something white, okay, the result is pretty good. This one obviously is not really white either, so that's good. Okay, so you could do that. And then this thing turn into a custom. Right, but there's no real way to know unless you have a gray card. Now, keep in mind though, uh, when you use Photoshop, right? Photoshop use a term especially inside of Photoshop. The term 50% gray, 50% gray. Okay. Now, to some people, you say 50% gray is something that that you have standard but how come it doesn't do 18% gray like the, the, the card? So now that's a really good question, except now keep this in mind, okay? The Photoshop 50% gray is the 18% gray for the card. Okay, they just use a different term. So, 
So when we talk about like 18% gray is a value that is between pure white and pure black. Okay. So Photoshop called it 50% gray. So don't be confused with that. Okay. So we're talking about the middle gray value, which is somewhere here. You know, it's kind of hard to, to tell at this magnification. Uh, but um, I guess you get to zoom in. Hold down the space key to move it. Now you can see the gray better. So like if you hit it here, it probably will give you a pretty good result. Let's go back to the fit. Yeah, actually this this kind of represent the true thing. I took this picture um, in the late afternoon and there's some, you know, a warm cast going on. So so that probably was a, a accurate 18% gray there or pretty close to it. All right, so let's assume that this is the right white balance that you want. Of course, you don't have to follow it. You you manipulate it so that it looks good to your eyes, and that's good enough. But if you want accurate kind of representation, then you might want to find 50% gray for uh, for a place to uh, to touch this thing on. Okay, so that is the the white balance part. All right. Now, the vibrancy and saturation, this is an endless uh, source of confusion for some people. It's like, what's the difference between the two? Okay, so, so it's best just to, to see what's going on. Okay, so now, if I change my vibrance all the way to the right, what happened? Of course, all of the colors uh, get deeper, right? It's get more gaudy or whatever. Okay, so it looks kind of fake to the point, right? So vibrance does that, right? Okay, reset it by double clicking. What about saturation? I go all the way. It looks stronger, right? But it's essentially the same effect. Okay, so what's the difference? Okay, before I do that, the vibrance, what about if you go to the left? You go to the left, as you probably could guess that it makes the color less. Okay, but you go to the vibrance, Okay, there are still some color that are left. You can see some of the green, some of the reds. Okay, but mostly it become pretty monochromatic. Okay, what about saturation? Now, if you go all the way, you can see that with saturation, when you go to the end, it has turned into a, a black and white photo now. So there's no color left. That kind of gives you a little hint, okay? The difference between the vibrance and saturation is the the level of changes, okay? What saturation does is that it will saturate the picture, uh, the colors. It will make the, the colors stronger, stronger, stronger with no limit, okay? It just go all the way that it could. Okay. The vibrance increase the saturation except that it won't allow it to even though you can't see the clipping but the colors have the clipping point too. So so vibrance don't further clip it. You know, when when it decides a color is is saturated enough it stops. Okay, so there's moderation in vibrance. Saturation, there's no hesitation. Okay, so it gives you the strongest effect. Okay, so now, let's suppose that you already have saturation all the way up, and you want the vibrance. Okay, let's crank it up and see what happens. 
As you can see that there are some changes, but it pretty much stay the same. Okay, it, it does add to it, but okay, so you have saturation all the way. Now look at the orange and the green, which is most visible. Okay, as I crank it up, there's a little m bit more. Okay, saturated, but at some point it just stops. It doesn't do it anymore. Right? Because it doesn't want to saturate further. Okay, so on the reverse, right? If I had the vibrance all the way up already and I wanted to push the saturation, look at what happened to the, the orange and the green. Okay, it will saturate it to the nth degree. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Okay, uh, both of them are very useful in different situations, but gives you the idea if you just want to push the color a little bit without, you know, overdoing it, vibrance is better than saturation. Okay, in this example, um, the color is not that vibrant. So, in this case, I would maybe push the, the vibrance up a little bit like this and maybe help it on with saturation a little bit. You know, this is to taste. Okay, something like this probably be good enough. It, it's... Um, Otherwise, it risks to have too much color. Okay, so that is basically the color panel editing in a nutshell. Okay, so now let's compare the result before and after uh, the edit. Okay, before the edit, um, it was already a good photo, but the right is a little bit more vibrant, right? Um, right now I'm doing it, in my opinion, a little bit overdoing it to show the, the effect, but you basically get the idea. Okay, the before over here, the after, is uh, much too strong. Normally I would use like 20 and 5, okay? But in this example, I kind of overdo it a little bit to show the effect. Okay, with that, I'm going to end the video here. I would like to thank you very much for staying with me to the end. And I would really much appreciate a like from you. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate a subscription. Thank you so much.